and welcome to Shalom World. I'm Jamie O'Brien from the Archdiocese of Perth and today we have us here Archbishop Peter Comensoli from the Archdiocese of Melbourne. Thank you very much for your time here today, Your Grace. Well, hello Jamie, it's good to be here. Can you tell us your response? What have you seen for this fourth Australian Catholic Youth Festival? I've seen once again what happens when you bring a good number of uh, young Catholics together that have not experienced the sense, at least in our Australian context, of being Christian, you know, the Catholic uh, denomination, together in a good numbers. And when it happens, and when there's the, the lovely experiences of faith and liturgy and uh, formation and just fun times together, they just blossom in their faith. And it's just really beautiful to watch. So often here in the Australian context, uh, our young people feel really rare because they might go to their own local church and be just one or two of them in amongst a whole pile of older people. And it's really difficult for them then to uh, have a strong sense of their faith and uh, carry that with a little bit of pride and mm. so on. But when they come together and they can see a whole pile of other similar aged um, and like-minded young people, uh, they know that they can stand strong uh, and that they know that they've got, uh, someone's got their back, each other have got their back in the faith and they know that they can experience the Lord in, in, in a really genuine way. Many young people today are facing various uh, challenges such as mental health issues. They say that one in three um, are some of the stats there. And the Wellbeing Centre here for the Australian Catholic Youth Festival has been a bit of a focus. Mm. What can you say in response to that and uh, how can we encourage young people today to, um, to look to the church, um, look to their faith as, as a, as a um, way to respond to, yeah. to their situations yeah. they're facing? In our Catholic tradition, there's two sort of principles, two foundations that we hold at the same time. We hold that everybody matters. Each of us are made uniquely by God in God's own image. And so each of us matter. And so many of our young people uh, are being told, well, you only matter if you can shape yourself in this way or be this kind of person or have these sort of features or capacities or whatever. But in our Christian tradition, we hold so strongly that everybody matters no matter what their circumstances, no matter what their strengths or weaknesses might be, no matter what their attractions or not might be and so on. So that's the first principle, everybody matters. The second principle is related. Every body matters. That our bodies themselves speak to us of the goodness of God. So, so much in our society and culture at the moment is about reshaping our bodies mm. in various ways, either by substances we might take um, or by uh, sexual identity or by uh, other ways of, you know, cosmetic surgery and, and so on. So there's, there's all this pressure and, and interestingly a lot of the pressure is associated with what we might call a consumer way of viewing the world, that we need to have something to be someone. And so this having uh, is, is constantly being portrayed for our young people. And so their own bodies become kind of alien to them. And that's so unfair. But our Christian tradition says, my body matters, your body matters. And it's a good thing because it comes from the gift mm. of God. And so those two principles come out of our Christian tradition. Everybody matters and every body matters. Yes. And I think the, 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 the well-being centre, the, the opportunity for reconciliation, the, the, the chapel particularly of prayer, um, 
becomes a center for these young ones to start rediscovering uh, the value of themselves yes. compared to the disvalue that society puts upon them so often. You've brought over a thousand young people, 1,200 young people here for the Catholic Youth Festival. What's your hope for them and uh, as they uh, start to return home and um, return back to their parishes? I, I love something that Steve Agassano said last night at, in the plenary. He said to our young people, uh, people will say to you, oh, you've got to go back to reality now and what have you. And he said, no, 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 this is reality. What you're in right now is. And that's what I hope that our young people might be able to take back to Melbourne and the Archdiocese of Melbourne, that they might, uh, what they discover of themselves uh, in their relationship with God and with one another, that they might be able to take that back. And a bit like in the Acts of the Apostles where you hear of the early church gathering together and sharing in common with one another and a generosity of heart and then growing as a result of that. So that was where things were happening at a local level and in a, in a small way in the early church I think that is also the way of the church today. So just as in the early church we could say it was the young church, today we can talk about the young church. Not the church for the young, it's a different thing, but a young church, mm. a church that is open to learning and experiencing a relationship with Jesus, a church that is able to um, open up the hearts of, of our young people and older people like us, uh, to the Lord and to one another and of being a sign, a kind of a witness out there in the rest of the world so that, so that other people go, oh, look at them. I want some of that. You've been Archbishop of Melbourne now for nearly uh, all, all over 12 months. How's that been? Uh, Melbourne's big. <laughs> so I came from a diocese uh, called Broken Bay, which is in the the northern suburbs of Sydney and the central coast of New South Wales. And that had about uh, a quarter of a million Catholics in that area. So I've, I've gone into a diocese four times the size and it struck me uh, just how widespread the Archdiocese of Melbourne is. There, there, are, there are really distinct regions and each of them has their own flavour and sense and so that's really significant I think and it's important to note because there's no kind of one size fits all when it comes to faith. Mm. Evangelization is always person to person, mm. family to family, community yes. to community. It's not some sort of big homogenous thing that you just shove on top of everyone. So coming into the local and understanding people in their lives and in their realities and saying well how do we bring the name of Jesus into this community? And how does the life of the kingdom of God find it, its roots and growth and, and fruit particularly amongst these people in this local co context? So that's something that I'm aiming to uh, help our Archdiocese to, to come to a sense of. Your Grace, thank you very much for your time here today. Thank you, Jamie.